Hi everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my floss tube channel. This is a quick tips floss keeper video. I had had some questions on how I put my floss on the floss keeper and I had filmed this weeks ago and I just never got it up. But I wanted to put it up now because no matter if you're stitching the old fashioned sal or you're stitching something else, the process is the same. I love my P-Touch label maker and I am going to use it to label the floss numbers because I'm using mostly um, DMC. If you're stitching, you know I've swapped out the white for a fancy floss white that I prefer, but the process would be the same. I would put the, the name of the floss instead of the, the DMC number, but I am typing out those numbers, printing them on my label maker, and then I'm putting them on the back <clears throat> of my floss keeper. Now, they don't have to stay there. Very easily, I would take like a little sharp tip of tweezers, or you can even maybe use the tip of some scissors to peel them up when the project is done. But I like to label mine with the label maker. I have heard other stitchers say that they like write in pencil because it's very easy to like sand it away when you're done. I'm sure there's many options. You could probably even use the DMC stickers that have the numbers if you're using DMC floss. My only word of caution with those DMC stickers because I've used them before to label like bobbins, they are not super sticky and sometimes fall off. And if this is gonna be in your project bag rustling around, I'm afraid they might fall off if they're not super sticky. So you can see that I've already pulled out my white B5200 skein, folded it in half, folded it in half, and folded it in half, and then snipped it. And I'm going to then go ahead and loop this onto one of the Boho Flower Floss Keeper loops. Open up the loop, thread the ends through to tighten it, and there is one color. And I'll show you again, pulling the floss from the skein. Now the great thing, and something I did not know until a few months ago or so, maybe a year now, is pull your DMC floss from the number that has the, or from the end that has the numbers. I know I mentioned this, I think in a floss tube and someone said they didn't know that. I did not know that until a few months ago either. I think it was mentioned on Fat Quarter Shop and I was like, that's brilliant. I always wondered why sometimes it tangled and sometimes it didn't. If you pull from the end that has the numbers, it's not going to tangle on you. How amazing is that? So I am unraveling my floss. I unravel the whole thing. Then I take it end to end, fold it in half, just as close as you can get. And I know with a video camera like this, it's really hard to get the entire uh, skein of floss <laughs> in the camera. So please forgive me while I am, I think I dropped it to be honest, um, working it through my hands. So now I fold it in half again. I am going to fold it in half one more time like this. And then I have a workable length. I take my scissors and snip through these loops. Then I thread it on to my floss keeper. Now I will say, if you are doing the loop method, you may want to do one less trim, one less folding it in half. I did not consider that. These links were perfect if I was going to use two strands of floss at once. If you've watched my video you, doing the loop method, you might not want to cut it quite so short because you're going to be sw swapping out your needle quite often. It doesn't really bother me um, too much to have to do that, but I did want to mention that depending on how you stitch. Now, I am not going to do every single color in real time as I'm doing right here. I didn't speed up the first part of the video. I'm going to do about three of the colors in real time and then I will speed it up for the rest. This did not take me long at all. I would say probably 15 minutes or less to do all of the colors for the stitch along. And I was starting with brand new skeins for each. 
It takes longer if you drop it and knot it like I just did. Uh, it wasn't super knotted, but you know, a little bit tangled. And then I'm just folding it through my fingers, running it through very, very gently to get it as close to even as possible, lining them up and then kind of clipping through. And threading it on. I wouldn't have clipped the other end, I guess is what I'm telling you, uh, if you're going to do the loop method stitching. The floss looks beautiful like this. It's really easy to use. If you're using it from skeins um, and have ever found that the more floss you use, obviously the little um, labels tend to pop off or you lose them. You might forget what color it is. So for me, it's just easy to use floss biddies like from Fat Quarter Shop or to use a floss keeper like this one from Chantal's 141 Design. You guys know if you follow me, I'm a big fan of her Etsy store. She sells amazing cross stitch backers. Her YouTube channel shares tons of inspiration for finishing cross stitch projects. She really is great at it and she also sells these floss keepers and I will have a link to that down in the description in case you're interested in picking up some. I have a couple. She actually sent me some that I gave away uh, as well. They're just really, really nice. I highly recommend them. They're super smooth. There's no jaggedy edges. They sand everything. So um, I just can't say enough great things. So let's go ahead and just speed through the rest of this. We're going to get to um, a lot of the prettier colors. You may notice I haven't added the little labels. I'm actually printing them off to the side. I'm using the skinnier label for this. I often have the thicker label in my label maker for some other things I label, but I do use both sizes of labels. I'm using the white back or the white labels instead of the clear labels. Either one would work though. It really doesn't matter. It's just whatever tape I had on hand. But the skinny label fit nicer on here, I thought, than the wider label. And I will have links to all of those. The label maker I'm linking to, I think is the newer version. I've literally had mine forever. I lost the power cord. That's how long I've had it. I probably need to either buy a new power cord or buy a new label maker because it's eating up batteries. But I believe in labeling everything. And because this took me less than 15 minutes to do all of this for one project, it was worth it. The other thing you see on the screen is the uh, corner guide. And this just helps when you are starting a project. Uh, depending on how far in, if you're starting in a top or bottom corner, it's super handy. I shared that in the first Stitch With Me. I will link to that Stitch With Me down in the description below if you want to kind of see a real time of how I used that to start a cross stitch project. And then I did zigzag my fabric for this project. I stitched I generally cross stitch the cross stitch, zigzag stitch the edges of my project uh, fabric projects, so it doesn't unravel. Um, some of my quicker, smaller projects sometimes I'm lazy and I don't, but either way is fine. So there are all my labels. You can see I've got them all, and I thought before I got too far, I probably should start label or start adding the labels because I did them in order. Now, for those stitching along with my sal, you know that at this point, uh, when I filmed this video, I had not chosen the reds that I'm using and swapping out for the teals. So this, the chart, I will link to the chart I'm using for this particular stitch below in case you're interested. It's the Shannon Christine Old Fashioned. That's what colors. These are the called for colors you're seeing on screen minus the teals. And I decided to switch the teals out with reds because I decorate with red and on my hot cocoa bar and really just kind of in general for Christmas. And I'm loving how it turns out. Follow my Instagram, follow my floss tube and my Facebook page, links to all of those down below to see my progress on the old fashioned sal as well as follow the hashtag old fashioned sal on Instagram 
and on social so that you can see how others are stitching. Shannon posted a lot of options too. So I'm just going to finish labeling this. I will put my rosy pinks uh, onto my floss keeper and we will be all done. I hope you guys have enjoyed this quick tip floss tube video sharing how I place my floss on a floss keeper from Chantal's 141 design. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube video. Thanks for watching!